Today is Thursday, April 30th, and this is VOA's International Edition. I'm Lori London in Washington. Coming up, not a cure, but a ray of hope amid the pandemic. Scientists say a drug shows promise as an effective treatment against the coronavirus. The data shows that remdesivir has a clear-cut, significant, positive effect in diminishing the time to recover. The last places on Earth without a single case of COVID-19. Also ahead, some musical artists are stepping up to help the class of 2020 graduate virtually. It's all on today's International Edition. Scientists have announced what they believe is the first effective treatment against the coronavirus, an experimental drug that can speed the recovery of COVID-19 patients. The top U.S. infectious disease official, Dr. Anthony Fauci, said Wednesday that a major study found that the experimental antiviral drug remdesivir was found to shorten the time it takes to recover by about four days on average from 15 days to 11. Although a 31% improvement doesn't seem like a knockout 100%, it is a very important proof of concept because what it has proven is that a drug can block this virus. Still, Fauci told reporters during a White House meeting Wednesday that the drug needs to be analyzed further and does not prevent someone from contracting the virus. This has nothing to do with vaccines. This is treatment for people who are already infected. Vaccines is to prevent infection in those who are at risk. The U.S. government says it's working to make the medication available to patients as quickly as possible. Meanwhile, President Trump says a lot of progress is being made toward developing a COVID-19 vaccine. They do come up with vaccines. I mean, you look at what's happened uh, as an example with uh, Ebola, with AIDS, with uh, others that have been so incredibly successfully, if not eradicated, certainly uh, it, it's been incredible what some of, you know, with, with what these people that I'm dealing with right now, like Gilead today, with, you know, what they came up with as an example. The administration is said to be organizing a project called Operation Warp Speed that aims to rush a coronavirus vaccine. But infectious disease specialists say the promise of a vaccine this year or within 12 to 18 months is promoting what could be false optimism. Joining us to talk about it is Dr. Arthur Kaplan, professor of bioethics at New York University Langone Medical Center. Thank you for being with us. So you're warning that there's no magic bullet for a quick vaccine to eradicate this virus from our lives. Can you explain? Well, I think it would help us a great deal to have a vaccine that's probably the most important breakthrough we could get. Are we going to have it this year? I'd be willing to bet a lot of money, no. And the reason I say that is there are so many steps that have to be taken before you could get really hundreds of millions of doses of vaccine out to either Americans or billions to the world. It is just silly to talk about doing it by the end of this year. People are getting the impression from the administration, even from some of our top scientists, like Dr. Fauci, that 12 months, 18 months is realistic to have a vaccine that would help us vaccinate our way out of this plague. Look, here's some steps. We've tried to find a vaccine for AIDS for about 30 years, and we haven't. So one problem is just because everybody's working hard and would really like to do it and could even make some money from it, it doesn't mean we'll get it. We also don't have one for hepatitis C. We also don't have a very good one for flu. We have one that's about 40% effective, but it's not a great vaccine. So the first obstacle is just figuring out, are we going to do this more like polio? Are we going to be lucky and do it like we did with hepatitis A and measles, or are we going to be confounded? Second, even if you get a breakthrough, mm-hmm. then you have to figure out how effective is the vaccine. People think, oh, vaccine, it must be 100%. No vaccine is 100%. The best mm-hmm. numbers I've ever seen in a vaccine, probably measles vaccination is about 95%, but there's still 5% of people who, for whatever reason, don't respond to it. So you have a lot of vaccines that millions and millions of people don't respond to. And some of them also require not just getting vaccinated, but getting vaccinated every year, mm-hmm. like the flu, or three shots, like the cervical cancer vaccine. So the reason I'm pointing this all 
that is when somebody says, well, we'll have a vaccine, I'm thinking, what if it's only 50% effective? Are we going to make it and distribute it and just say, well, that's better than nothing? Or what if it requires two shots or three shots? Could we really get that done effectively around the world? If you don't do it worldwide, you're just begging the virus to come back. What if another country like, say, Germany comes up with a vaccine for COVID-19? Mm. What would that mean for the rest of the world, including the U.S.? Vaccine manufacturing has been falling down for decades. So we only have five big companies, really, that make most of them. The question really is, if some country came up with a vaccine, would they say, OK, well, we'll give it to the place that needs it the most? Or would they say, no, nah, we don't care. We're going to keep it here in Germany and vaccinate everybody in Germany. So again, another problem with vaccines, mm. I'm not sure they're going to go where they're needed the most. Is there no way at this point to really predict whether we will have a vaccine, it will be able to be distributed, we will all be able to get it in any sort of time frame at this point? One other factor in terms of when could we expect this, and that's cost. Tetanus vaccine is pretty cheap. I think it costs 10 cents, and it's around the whole world, and there are a few places that don't have enough of it, but it's it's pretty good. It's out there. HP vaccine for cervical cancer, 300 bucks. Shingles mm. vaccine, a very new one using new technology given to older people, probably 500 bucks. Wow. If this vaccine turns out to be 500 bucks per go, I think you can see what the other problem is. The rich might get it. The connected might get it. The rich countries might get it. But there's going to be an awful lot of people who aren't going to be able to afford a $500 vaccine. There are a lot of variables that are still unknown is what I'm hearing. And I'm going to say, even though the name of this vaccine project that was announced is Project Warp Speed, if you put a vaccine out there that is dangerous, that winds up having side effects that hurt people or even killed people, there's a lot of people who are leery of vaccines anyway, right? right so right. you can't do that. You can go fast, but you still have to be safe. You have to make sure that you're not going to cause harm. And to me, the realistic time frames are measured in many years, not months. A new study of a drug, Ramdesivir, Ram showing some promise. What the drug has shown is that in about 30% of people who were getting better, mm -hmm. they recovered more quickly. It doesn't say that it saved them or rescued them from dying. It just said once you turn the corner and begin a recovery, this drug seemed to help you recover more quickly. That's good. I'm not sure that's going to knock down the death rate. It will knock down the hospitalization rate. It'll make it easier for people with the disease to bear it because it'll be shorter. But it's an early promissory note, and I think you're going to see more drugs come along that do a little, do a little. But we can't go day after day saying, oh, today we got the magic bullet. Mm -hmm. I don't think viruses are going to get treated that way. That hasn't been the experience, again, with AIDS and HIV. The thing that ultimately worked out for AIDS was multiple drugs used together finally established some control. No single drug did it. And the data that he's got is early data. We'll have to see if it holds up in bigger numbers. Look for a magic bullet or a overnight breakthrough. Dr. Arthur Kaplan, professor of bioethics at New York University Langone Medical Center. The federal government's social distancing guidelines are due to expire today, and President Trump says he will not be extending them. AP Washington correspondent Sagar Magani reports. They were issued 45 days ago. They'll be fading out because now the governors are doing it. With the guidance folded into recommendations given to state leaders like Louisiana's John Bell Edwards, who sat with him in the Oval Office. It's sort of a seamless way to do it. Edwards is under fire at home from Republicans for extending Louisiana's stay-at-home order through May 15th. The president's been eagerly touting some states reopening, even as the nation hits grim milestones. More than 58,000 Americans have now died from the virus, more than were killed in the Vietnam War. More than one million have tested positive, which the president says is good news in a way. It's a tremendous amount, and the reason is because of testing, because other countries don't test. So you, if you don't test, you're not going to find cases. Sagar Megan. Here are some of the other stories we're following at VOA News. About two dozen migrants deported from the United States on a flight to Colombia last month have tested positive for the new coronavirus to worries that U.S. deportations could be helping spread the virus. Satellite imagery showing recent movements of luxury boats often used by North Korean leader Kim Jong-un and his entourage near Wonsan provide further indications he's been at the coastal resort. That according to experts who are monitoring the reclusive regime. Speculation about Kim's health and location have erupted after his unprecedented absence 
from April 15th celebrations to mark the birthday of his late father. Despite infecting more than 3 million people around the world, there are still 34 countries and territories that have yet to report a single case of the novel coronavirus. They include Comoros, Lesotho, Tajikistan, Turkmenistan, and tiny far-flung island nations in the Pacific, such as Nauru, Kiribati, and the Solomon Islands. Stay with VOA for all the latest U.S. and world news.